Russian troops plead for help after Putin's latest offensive turns into death trap. A badly timed Russian offensive in Donetsk has backfired badly on the troops and led to a slaughter among the forces, as one letter begging for help revealed. Russia launched a badly timed offensive to take the town of Pavlovka in Donetsk in recent weeks. However, newly shared posts on Telegram and even a private letter to the Russian Ministry of Defense from forces have exposed the disaster on the ground. Hundreds of men in the 155th Marine Brigade of the Russian Pacific Fleet have died during the pointless offensive which failed to secure any ground for Vladimir Putin. A stunning letter from the soldiers in the brigade was shared widely on Telegram. Troops urged the governor of the Russian region of Primorye to contact the Russian Ministry of Defense. The losses in Pavlovka are thought to be one of the worst single operation losses for a Marine Brigade since the Chechen Wars in the 1990s. In the letter, the soldiers single out General Rustam Muradov who was only promoted to commander in Ukraine in early October. The letter read, General Muradov has thrown us into an incomprehensible offensive in order for Muradov to earn bonuses, and to be promised a hero of Russia. We lost 300 people killed, wounded, and missing in four days. The command of the district did this. How long will General Muradov and Akhmetov plan military operations? They call people meet. In the appeal for help, the soldiers claim that blood is pouring and pouring while they wait for responses from commanders. Videos from the region show Ukrainian forces continuing to repel Russian advances and even pushing them further back in Donetsk. Many analysts have pointed out that the Russians bizarrely seem to wait for bad weather and muddy conditions to launch their attack. Andrew Perpetua, who provides daily updates on the war, tweeted out a summary of the situation. Russia's attack on Pavlovka could not have been worse timed. It is like they sat around and waited for the worst possible time to attack and only launched the attack then. He continued, I cannot even comprehend the thoughts going through the minds of those in command, or if they even had any. Rather than aborting, Russia sent all their men to their death. They've sustained crippling casualties and achieved nothing. Rob Lee, a British defense analyst, tweeted that Russian telegram channels are publicly discussing the heavy losses from Russia's 155th Naval Infantry Brigade in Pavlovka. Several pro-Russian accounts said that the country's troops had been left in knee-deep muddy fields which had become a death trap for many. This comes as the Ukrainian Foreign Ministry has claimed its forces killed another 600 Russian soldiers in the past 24 hours. Putin in trouble as people in Kremlin stabbing each other in the back. While criticism of the Russian president remains beyond the pale, various reports suggest that those close to Vladimir Putin are not united. The Kremlin is one of the most secretive places on earth. No one knows for sure what is motivating Vladimir Putin in the invasion of Ukraine. It is also unclear whether anyone working closely with Putin is willing to defy the orthodoxy in Moscow and challenge him on the war. If U.S. intelligence is accurate, it appears there could be division inside the Kremlin. A source familiar with Washington's briefings recently said, it's a real-life house of cards, but in the Kremlin. All stabbing each other in the back. The claims were reported by CNN. The source said that a mysterious figure called Yevgeny Prigoshin stood up to Putin and criticized the Russian military's failings. He founded the Wagner Group, a private mercenary group that the Russian government uses to help with military operations. Ukraine is no different. The Wagner Group has been accused of being involved in the war crimes committed in the country. Prigoshin has always denied having links to the Kremlin, but he has previously been described as Putin's chef after his catering company provided food for rulers in Moscow. Kremlin spokesman Dmitry Peskov even denied these claims, telling CNN, this information is fundamentally incorrect. President Putin holds meetings about the special military operation on a regular basis and all participants express different point of view in working mode. But Russia expert, Michael Kaufman, believes Prigoshin sees an opportunity to move up in station and wants to embarrass Russian Defense Minister Sergei Shuigu in the hopes of advancing himself. Meanwhile, the U.S. security source points to other issues which could end up hurting Putin's regime. Mobilization has angered many in Russia as their loved ones are sent to risk their lives. On the other side, there are ultranationalist figures who want Putin to escalate the violence further, even towards a nuclear strike. They added, the Kremlin is walking on a tightrope. Mobilization is widely unpopular in Russia and all talk about ongoing and additional mobilization is prohibited in the controlled information space. Several senior officials would like the war to end because Putin's ambitions are considered unrealistic. Same with many oligarchs. At the same time, you have people like Prigoshin, Chechen leader Ramzan, Kadyrov and certain influential military bloggers who want Moscow to go all in. Frustration at the lack of progress made by Russia in Ukraine is also apparent in the Russian media. State TV is usually supportive of the Russian government, and while the broadcasters are still reluctant to question Putin, the Russian military is coming under increasing scrutiny.
Last month, leading Russian journalist Alexander Sladkov reported on the losses Russia has suffered in the Donbas region. He said that the situation is difficult. Ukraine's armed forces are at the peak of their capabilities due to their mobilization they started in spring. Alexander Kotz, a reporter for the for pro Kremlin newspaper Komsomolskaya Pravda, added, the Russian troops do not have enough manpower to stop the enemy attacks. The recent Russian losses are directly connected to that. It's a very difficult period of time on the front line at the moment. He added that Ukrainian forces are on the high and enjoying a numeric advantage. Mr. Kotz continued, they don't have problems with the intelligence data or high-precision weapons which they are constantly using. We are just waiting for our reserves to become fighting fit and join the battle. Russia's poorly trained new troops adding little to combat capacity. Newly mobilized Russian troops will be sent into battle with little training, or no training at all, and offer little additional offensive combat capability, British defense officials have said. Saturday's assessment by the UK Ministry of Defense, MOD, adds to a picture of disarray among Russian forces, with draftees complaining about a lack of equipment and that they have not been paid. One military expert told Newsweek that morale among Russian troops is so low that the use of soldiers as fodder could come back to haunt the regime in the way it did during the Soviet-Afghan war that ended in 1988 and preceded the collapse of the USSR. British defense officials said on Saturday that Russian forces were already stretched in providing training for the estimated 300,000 troops called up in the partial mobilization announced on September 21. But the problem to get troops battle ready has been compounded by the additional regular autumn annual conscription cycle announced on 30 September, which started in November and is expected to bring in an additional 120,000 personnel. Newly mobilized conscripts likely have minimal training or no training at all, the UK MOD said because experienced officers and trainers have been deployed to fight in Ukraine, and some have likely been killed in the conflict. The MOD said that it was likely that Russian forces are conducting training in Belarus, due to a shortage of training staff, munitions and facilities in Russia. Deploying forces with little or no training provides little additional offensive combat capability, added the MOD assessment, which tends to emphasize Russian losses and Ukrainian gains in the war. Newsweek has contacted the Russian Defense Ministry for comment. Zev Feintouch, senior intelligence analyst at security firm Global Guardian, told Newsweek that morale among Russian troops has been low for a long time. Mobilized troops have cited a lack of pay, motivation, clear orders, and critical supplies in numerous instances, Feintouch said. Captured soldiers, particularly from Wagner-run prisoner formations, have accused their superiors of summarily executing mobilized prisoners for minor offenses. Wagner is the mercenary outfit founded by Putin ally Yevgeny Prigozhin, and it is playing a key role in Russia's invasion of Ukraine. In the short term, it's probably a bit optimistic to think that these incidents show Putin losing his grip on the Russian armed forces, said Feintouch. But, over the long term, the widespread abuse, poor training and equipment, and the use of certain soldiers as fodder, will come back to haunt the regime as it did during the Soviet-Afghan war and the subsequent collapse of the USSR. The British MOD said on Friday that the Russian army is likely to be threatening to shoot deserters to compel offensives as low morale is rife among its troops. Meanwhile, a group of untrained Russian soldiers from the Tomsk region reportedly fled from the front line in Ukraine and have been hiding in a forest for two weeks.